Hello and welcome to Tunnel Vision, Tideway's new YouTube channel dedicated to bringing you behind the scenes on London's new super sewer. I'm Amma Edison, part of the team working on cleaning up London's river. Right now, London relies on a 150-year-old sewer system built for a population less than half its current size. It was designed by Thousandjet to cope with a population of 4 million. Today, though, there are nearly 9 million people here. That system, despite being in remarkably good condition, simply cannot cope. When it rains, that rainwater floods the sewer system, mixes with raw sewage and spills directly into the River Thames. Anything that goes down the toilet in London could well end up in this river. That's where Tideway comes in. We're building a giant sewer tunnel to intercept those nasty overflows and clean up the river. And today I'm in the north banks of the Thames in lovely Fulham, home of Craven Cottage, Wait a minute. And Stamford Bridge. Here, right next to Wandsworth Bridge, Tideway is engaged in some seriously groundbreaking civil engineering. There are two kinds of sites on Tideway. Those at which we're linking up with Bazalgette's original sewer system, like at Blackfriars, for example, where we were at last. And then there's our launch sites, sites where our giant tunneling machines begin their journey. Carnworth Road is a launch site. Let's head inside to find out more. Today, the lovely Katie is taking myself and the crew out on site. We grabbed our self-rescuer kits and headed into the lift down the incredible shaft. First, Kate introduced us to Santa Barbara, the patron saint of tunnelers, who is blessed by a local priest at the beginning of every tunneling project to bring everyone involved with the project good luck. So Katie, I know that we came down what's called a shaft, but you can, can you tell us what a shaft actually is? So the shaft, basically, is the main part of the site here at Carnwood Road, where all the main activity has been taking place. This is where we launched Rachel from. So, on the 10th of May 2019, she was launched heading west and 503 days later, she reached Acton and broke through, completing the seven kilometre section of the tunnel. And I know across London you have different types of geographical soils. What sort of soil did Rachel have to borrow through and was it fairly easy or was it fairly difficult? So we tunnelled all the way through London Clay, which made our drive easy compared to other sections. We took 725,000 tonnes of spoil down to Rainy Moon Essex, which also took 25,000 lorries off of London Road. So actually taking the soil away by river rather than the road is, is better for the environment, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. So how did Rachel actually make the tunnel? What she did first is she excavated out the spoil and then what she did was she installed concrete segment rings she installed 4,054 um, to enable her to complete the seven kilometre tunnel from here to Acton. So as she's boring through the soil, she's actually building the tunnel at the same time? She was, she was multitasking. Oh, so she amazing. was doing two things at once. So is it safe to say that you enjoyed your time at Tideway? I thoroughly enjoy working on site. I enjoy the people, the characters and being right in the middle of exactly what the guys are doing, being part of that team to construct something like this is something to be really, really proud of, and that I am. We wrapped up with Katie, headed out the shaft safely despite being in tight pants. <laughs> it's because my pants are tight. <laughs> and headed over to Acton Storm Tanks, our further site west. Before we go into any Tideway site, we need to put on our five-point PPE. We've got our snazzy safety boots, safety gloves, our fab safety glasses, and of course, our hard hats. 
safety first. Section manager Josh is taking us out on site today to tell us more about the site at Acton. So I'm looking at this beautiful site here. Can you just tell me a bit more about what's going on here? We're at uh, Acton Storm Tank site, which is the furthest west of all the, uh, all the sites on the whole Taipei project. And it's basically where the, the tunnel starts. Behind us, basically, you can see the entire site. There's the drop shaft and basically, uh, just recently, we've had the tunnel boring machine break through as well. So at the end of the project, when all of this is gone, what is the site going to look like? Well, at the end of the project, the idea is that all the structures that have been built, including the drop shaft, are buried um, just below ground level. So only a few of the structures you will be able to see the footprint of. Everything else will be buried and will be covered with uh, either tarmac surfacing or architectural landscaping finishes, such as drainage ponds, uh, tree plantations, things like that. So the idea is the, this, this particular portion of the Thames Water Facility will look much, much better than it used to. And you won't really be able to tell what exactly there is underground at this location. So would you like to come and see TBM Rachel? Uh, yes. Clearly way too excited. We're now going down into the shaft to see TBM Rachel in the flesh. Let's do this, like I'm not scared of heights, but hey. Unfortunately, no lift this time. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so awesome. Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh, seriously, look at it. That looks awesome. Here we go, bottom of the drop shaft. And uh, here's the TBM. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, this is so great. So can you tell me what it is I'm looking at? I am in a shaft right now, but what is this? This is um, the Acton site uh, drop shaft. Uh, eventually in the future, this will take um, storm overflows and raw sewage down from above, from interception chamber right above at the top, down through a vortex drop tube and into this tunnel behind us, as we've just seen has been connected recently. I'm glad they actually pointed to the tunnel boring machine. Can you tell me what it is I'm looking at? Well, this is um, tunnel boring machine Rachel, uh, and she's literally just broken through as of yesterday. She's completed a seven kilometre tunnel drive all the way from Carnworth Road, which is the main drive site near Wandsworth Bridge. And uh, yeah, here she is. So I can see that there's a lot of spoils that's been excavated. Can, do you know what you're going to do with it afterwards? Well, well, at the moment, we've cleared out a fair amount of the mess that was created from the breakthrough. However, as you can see, there's a little bit more to do. So what's going to happen is uh, shortly the excavator just behind me um, is going to remove the rest of this and take it to the top so it's nice and clear down here. So can you also explain, because this is a very big machine, how are you going to get it out and up onto the surface? Well, it's a, it's a very complicated and long process, but effectively the tunnel boring machine will need to slide through onto the rails, bringing, uh, bringing herself as far out of the tunnel as possible. And then in pieces, we will be removing sections of the tunnel boring machine, lifting them up to the surface to be dismantled and then sent away from site to be reused in other projects. How does your team feel to actually see Rachel come through? Oh, it feels fantastic uh, to, for the breakthrough to have finally occurred. Um, we've seen a tunnel boring machine when it originally was dropped in at Carnworth Road um, back in 2019. We've been mon obviously monitoring its journey, but us as a team at Acton have been looking forward to this um, milestone date for quite a while. And it's great to see it live, uh, live in the flesh. Well, it was really cool to stand in front of Rachel, knowing that she had dug her way all the way from Conworth Road. And I obviously couldn't leave without a selfie. And finally, on this episode of Tunnel Vision, we head east to King Edward Memorial Park foreshore to find out what measures have been put in place to protect our workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Hello there, I'm Marie Pam Charles. I'm a civil engineering apprentice here at King Edward Memorial Park foreshore. Um, and I'm just gonna take you through some COVID measures that we have here on site. Let's go. This is our lovely sink along with all our sanitation points. Um, we only have one sink, unfortunately, um, but so you can wash your hands here before you come in on site or if you just fancy it throughout the day. Um, obviously there's sinks in the toilets and the kitchens and everywhere else, but you know, you can never be too careful. I have a lot of bubbles. But yeah, and you just pump with your foot. Um, so it's really easy to get water out. And then um, there is hand towel here, do to do 
Um, and then, quite fun, you could kick this to open it. So if you're a little bit aggressive in the mornings as well, you can just go for it there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's our little um, uh, hand washing station. Yes, another hand sanitation point. Um, so right, so now we're gonna go in and collect our halves watches. When you come in in the morning, um, you get your pass and you put it on one of these and then it beeps at you and then you wait to find the one that vibrates um, there we go so you take that out and that's my one here you get this little strap that's yours that you then take home and keep with your pass or something like that they beep and they vibrate um, when they're too too close in contact with one another um, but yeah and this is the charge oh that's really annoying right um, I'm just going to put that there um, anyway um, right so every evening um, you put one you put yours back here and it charges and it also sends the data from that to some place in the sky, I don't know, some um, data clouds that it can be sorted by um, the people on site. So if we do have somebody with COVID, we can see through these watches who's come into contact with who because they're registered to your card. Um, and it's just a good way of keeping track of who's been in contact with who so that if one person caught COVID you wouldn't need to shut down the whole site. Um, right so these are our two meter markers just to remind people to socially distance because it is really easy to forget especially in the workplace. Righty. Right Vino? Right, how are you? Yeah good good. Yeah. Right so this is one of our one-way systems on site so you walk down here and obviously as you well I can't see currently because he's behind a van um, but as you can see Peter's walking up the other side um, and it's just so you don't come into contact with one another. And here he is. So I'll go down this way. Right, so these are our new stores. Um, and while we were building new things anyway, we thought we'd add in some lovely perspex um, so that I'll keep our storesmen safe. Um, so obviously we can still get whatever it is that we need, but just um, keeping that level of protection because obviously he does need to hand us things. Um, and when he's, when he's not busily working, which he usually is, um, he's got a lovely little place to sit, a little perspex screen so we can see what's going on. And um, so yeah, that's our new stores. Obviously because of COVID, um, while people are getting changed and taking their breaks and so on, we need to keep a lot um, more space between them. Um, and we couldn't reduce the number of people um, because we still needed them for the work. So we've just added a lot more um, canteen and welfare space. So there's two here and there's another two there and there's another two on the other side of them. So definitely taking up a lot more space, but obviously keeping everybody safe. Righty, so um, one of the biggest one-way systems um, is as you come onto site, as usual, you go through these doors, but then when you exit site, you cross the path over there and then come back out through those doors and then come out through this um, exit there. Oh, and another hand sanitization point. Just in case we didn't have enough. And another hand sanitization point. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you liked this video. Please hit the like button and comment below and do not forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode of Tunnel Vision. Take care.